Primal Chaos. Hey guys, Primal Chaos here. Welcome to the channel. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Enchroma Glasses. Enchroma makes corrective lenses and glasses for people with all kinds of color deficiencies. So if you're colorblind or you know someone who is, check out their website. And if you use the code CHAOS in checkout, C-H-A-O-S, you'll get 10% off. Tell them Primal Chaos sent you. All right, guys, today's one is another one that comes out of the Discord channel. It was uh, recommended by, listen, <laughs> Sneeu Box De Reuter. Um, I probably butchered that, but look, um, this is a like a metal band out of Germany called Lord of the Lost. Again, I'm not familiar with these guys at all, but I'm told that the singer who's, uh, what's his name? Chris Harms has a pretty unique voice, uh, you know, because originally this channel was centered around extreme vocals. So apparently he's got kind of a unique voice, but also look, they're, they're gothic metal, industrial, and from what I understand, cinematic, which is right up my alley. I love that sort of stuff. Throw more strings into metal, you know? Um, so if there's any kind of orchestration and stuff like that, that'd be kind of interesting and, and very welcome on this channel. But look, as I don't know too much about them other than German and all that sort of stuff, uh, they're out of Hamburg. Let's just jump right in. Lord of the Lost Ruins. This is the official music video. They oh, cool. Oh, interesting accent. Wow. There we go. There's the group. See, that's... I love when bands do this, right? Let's have a listen. There's no real rhythm until that hi-hat comes in. Now we got a pulse. That's really cool. Do I just see a keyboard on that guitar? Okay, cool. Okay, so it seems like he's got he's got that sort of low, almost like reminds me of, and I hope this isn't offensive, <laughs> almost like that Villa Valo kind of low um, baritone, almost like no, oh, no, 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 which is synonymous with your gothic and um, industrial kind of stuff. Um, but then he's he's also got that frost going right, 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 sort of stuff, which is it's cool. I like a good versatile vocalist. And, and there's, there's some death growls in there. Some of the lower ones as well. Oh, that's cool. Come on. Those organic sounding is that a working is that a working MIDI controller I'll bet it is I'm trying to figure out if that was a guitar sound or not. it sounds too organic to be synth there's obviously a piano yeah, you can hear the frets, it's a guitar. Or is it? <laughs> Jump back into a harsh vocal? Yeah, alright. Yeah, I like this. This is great. Oh, 
Damn, that sounds massive, eh? Now, are we ending or are we going to the chorus? Yeah, right. Oh, wow. So that's in 5 4. Hang on. So I'm going to check this out. My fingers are out of time. One, two, three, four, five. That's cool because what it does, if it was just in 4 4, or like, because 5 4 kind of has this weird waltz to it that's off, off kilter. Like a, a waltz is like your one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Six, eight is a little bit less swung. You know, it doesn't feel kind of like a waltz. It's like, that's where it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Because because the, the second half of that, the second three sort of pulls you out of that sort of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you know. Whereas five kind of has that, a little bit of that swing to it. But it throws your off your ear because you sort of you naturally hear songs on a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four kind of pulse. But then when it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, the vocals coming in one beat too late for it to be four, four, and one beat too early for it to be like a waltz or a six, eight, if that makes sense. Um, and you can hear that here. Like you, you, what tweaks your ear is the singer comes in a beat after you're expecting it. Great piano riff as well, it's really deep. Anthemic chorus, these guys are just, they've figured it out man. And you know what? The vocals are low enough any guy can sing along to it. That's deliberate. It's a choice. Awesome. That was really cool. Now, I've got a lot to talk about. So what what's interesting about this is so many times in metal, I feel like the the last thing the band wants you to think about is the songwriting. They want you to hear their playing and their eclectic choices, and they want that ADHD kind of aesthetic of just never repeating anything. It's always going, you know, from beginning to end, it evolves from A to Z without any kind of callbacks or repetition, or if it is, it's, it's very clever and minimal. Um, and the, the art that in itself is an art form. I'm not, I'm not saying one's better than the other or, or whatever. What I'm getting at is establishing a point of difference between different types of metal and their concepts and the way they lean into songwriting. Uh, whereas these guys, Lord of the Lost understand songwriting from a more fundamental level where you can, you can generate and garner more appeal across different genres by, by, by doing 
things in a traditional way, but enveloped in that that layer of of sort of metal energy, if if, if that makes sense. So the formula for this song is, you know, an interesting intro, which is cool. Like I said, they play around with timing and stuff like that. So you're never quite sure exactly where you're standing with those accents. All the band coming in, they know what they're doing because they're counting it, right? Um, but then until that hi-hat comes in and gives you some perspective about where the pulse is, it's just randomized hits, you know? I mean, it could very well be in 5-4 five, five, again or something like that. So that, that's why it sounds so weird and off-kilter. But they're not repeating the accents either. They're sort of doing like a bop up and then a bop. And then when you think the pattern's coming around again, they just do a bop instead of a bop bop, you know, and things. So very interesting. And then the hi-hat comes in and you go, okay, I, I can, I'm aware of my space now. Then they go into that low sort of, dare I say, him sort of vocal for the, for the v- verse. And then each, each verse seems to have a subsequent second half that's like high, like a fry scream kind of, rah, 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 kind of aggressive vocal. Um, and then they do some trickery in between, but then it goes into a chorus that's anth- anthemic, right? And that's where a lot of that sort of flavor comes in for that symphonic thing, because the chorus is anthemic. You want to you want to sing along to it and punch the air. And, you know, I can imagine it at shows, everybody would know the words to that, you know? Um, and then they do some more trickery and then they go back into another verse. And then that leads into the aggressive part. And then it comes back into an anthemic chorus. Then they play around with some things. Then you go into the bridge or middle eight or whatever that sort of, you know, takes you through another interesting journey where, again, they sort of came out of that with some repetition. And I wasn't sure whether or not they were going to just end it there or if they were going back into another chorus, which is typically how it works. Like almost every pop song ever is, you know, intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, um, sometimes a pre-chorus in between. And then you've got like a bridge and then chorus, chorus, and that's kind of your outro, you know, or you add an outro or something these guys have taken that subtle art of pop writing and, you know, as, as the bones of the structure. And then they've just created this maelstrom of cool metal over the top with, you know, all of the embellishments you'd want in a band that you respect in the metal genre, you know, like playing around with interesting time signatures, um, having aggressive vocals, but also having engaging vocals as well. And, you know, it doesn't, even though, like I said, it's got a pattern, it's not like it's repetitive or it gets boring they're always coming up with different sort of tangents for each of their parts as well, which shows that they care at the end of the day. It's real easy to just cut and paste a verse and write new lyrics. It's, it takes an extra level of passion to then um, come up with variations that keep the song interesting across the entire length of the song. And that's, these guys are great at that. Um, Not sure who produced it or anything, but um, I, you know, whoever produced it also did a good job as well. Um, the mix was great. This is this is just a great act. I'd love to see these guys live, actually. Um, and I love that they sort of like, I love where goth and industrial has sort of evolved, where they, they, they sort of don't look like goth dudes, but they still do. It's like a 2020 aesthetic for that sort of thing. Uh, and they're a little bit easier to take seriously because it looks like they're all in unison. They all sort of get the you know, it's, it's not your, your, your mum and dad's goth. You know what I mean? It's not your 45 year old goth who likes Bauhaus and, and, uh, the cure and stuff like that. This is like goth for the new era, the new generation. And I guess, to be honest with you, to me, it lands more in industrial, but with a goth, gothic aesthetic, you know, but just, I just want to pause real quick. I want to look up that guitar and see what's going on there. Just give me a sec. All right, I've gotten to the bottom of it. So it's a brand called Cyan Custom Guitars made in Germany. And this is specifically for uh, uh, Garrett or Jared Dirge from this band. So it's a custom piece. But what's interesting is it's it's a keytar, really, with two baritone guitar strings. Uh, it's got an Akai MIDI controller keyboard, like I suggested, uh, through there. Let's see if there's a close-up of that. Yeah, there we go. I love how distressed it looks. That's really cool. And then as you can see here, there's two ultra low baritone strings. They don't look like your typical 56s or whatever. It almost looks like they're high bass strings. Um, They're just too thick to be regular guitar strings. So what's interesting about that is you can tune them to maybe be, um, you know, like so so you can easily play fifth chords or, or something like that, or maybe one of them is a drone note or something. So you can just play along with the guitars without, 
too much harmony. I mean, that's not super necessary in a band like this because you've got, I think, two other guitar players. Singer plays guitar as well. Um, and so, yeah, but that's that's just really interesting. So he can literally... One thing I did notice was there wasn't a whole lot of orchestration in this song. There was synth parts, but there wasn't like a huge orchestral movement. There wasn't anything where you would need to work across several octaves, even though I'm sure these buttons here control something along those lines. Uh, but, you know, he can play it pretty much with one hand in the same way you'd play a guitar, to be honest. Whether or not he has any kind of control on the headstock or the back of the neck um, for things like pitch bending and stuff like that, I don't know. Um, it's hard to tell. I don't think so. There's no anything there. But yeah, anyway, that was really interesting. Anytime people innovate uh, a new instrument around their aesthetic, it's always interesting to me. Uh, the guitar player from Linkin Park often plays without the two high strings because I guess they, you know, they're not necessary in his style. Celeste, you've got to remember to mute and things. To me, that would drive me crazy, but it's his thing. You know, there's, there's always interesting um, concepts Obviously, Matt Bellamy from Muse has got the synthesizer part of his guitar in the back as well, uh, or the effects, um, I think it's a Korg effects unit or something like that built in. Um, I love that sort of stuff, and I love you know playing around building guitars and modifying them and doing things like that. So um, adding some 3D printed elements. I've got some stuff I'm working on, but not ready to show yet. Anyway, look, I've harped on too much about this, but man, that's, that's just cool when you come across something like that. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank the guys over at Discord, you guys um, have been recommending some cool stuff. So definitely thank you for that and check that out. Also, if you've made it this far, I'm running a competition until the end of September uh, where if you are subscribed, so if you're not subscribed, hit the bell um, and you leave a comment uh, about what you would do with a blue microphone in the comments. And also just, you know, mention something about the, um, you don't have to just enter this. You can also write a comment about the video, but uh, yeah, just I'm just trying to get subs and, and some engagement and stuff like that through this month. So this is going to be the prize. Someone will win this. Um, I haven't really decided yet whether it's going to be the strength of the comment or the uh, or whether I'm just going to pick them at random. I guess it'll depend on the comments. But uh, this uh, is a great little microphone if you want to start doing something like what I'm doing here. Um, it's also, it's unidirectional or omnidirectional, so you can use it as a podcast. Good starting point sit in the middle, plug it into a computer and you got yourself a podcast. It's also good for streaming games and all sorts of stuff like that as well. Dual polar pattern. It's got two capsules inside. If you're a microphone fan, you'll know what that means. It gives it some versatility. So yeah, please um, enter that because I really love to give something back to you guys and that's my way of doing it. So uh, thanks again. If you feel like I've brightened your day at all, feel free to buy me a coffee. Just support the channel that way. Or you can just hit the heart under the video that says thanks and you can you can also donate through there as well. It really does help, guys. And every every cent goes into making the channel a better place. Um, and yeah, so like, share, subscribe. I already did that. And thanks again for sticking around this long. Thank you for checking out a band that maybe isn't the kind of band that's going to get me 10,000 views because these are the videos that the channel is all about. The ones that, I mean, I don't know, this may, this may really take off, but I suspect that it's not going to get Dimash numbers, right? So um, yeah, but thanks again. I love these recommendations. Keep them coming. And uh, now that you know that I'm into this sort of stuff, hit me up with some other stuff similar. I'm, I'm a big fan. Thanks again, guys. Catch you in the next one. Hey, guys, this video is made possible by Enchroma. One in six guys and one in 200 women are colorblind. And if that happens to be you, there's something you can do about it. Click the link in the description. It'll take you to Enchroma's website where you can get a free eye test. And while you're there, maybe pick up some corrective lenses. They've got styles to suit everybody and a 60 day money back guarantee. So you've got really nothing to lose. And while you're there, use the code chaos in checkout to get 10% off. Tell them Primal Chaos sent you.